Hello friends, how are you? So here we are going to start our uh, new topics uh, uh, from the chapter motion. I am your physics mentor Chetan Pati. Welcome you all in this uh, online video. So here we are going to start with the chapter motion, which is from uh, uh, class ninth physics. So previously uh, we have seen the basic concept. We will just recap this basic concept, what exactly they are, and we will proceed further uh, to the new uh, topics like graphical representation and the derivation of the equations of the motions with the help of graph. So here we start. So the basic concept. This chapter is about the motions. Already you might have learned about the motion. Is that it is the change of position with respect to the time as well as the reference point. This reference point may be different. This reference is uh, can be a left side, right side, origin position. So it may it may be relative concept. If the reference changes, the relative position will also change. So motion in general is defined as it is uh, the change in position with respect to a particular reference or a standard position as well as with respect to time. So, for example, if you are saying that if you are sitting in a classroom and uh, some other uh, one is observing you, which is uh, uh, observing you as at rest, but if suppose someone is moving in the space and that observer which is observing you at the rest on the earth, so we can say that earth is rotating, so you are also in the motion with respect to the position of that person in the space. So every object in the universe is uh, uh, a little bit either in the motion or in the rest position with respect to a particular position. So motion is of uh, two kinds we are going to see here, uniform motion and non-uniform motion. Now what is uniform motion? So for getting the concept of uniform motion, we have to uh, understand the basics of parameters which are distance, displacement, speed and velocity. So, what is meant by distance? So, distance is the actual path which is travelled or actual path length which is covered in particular interval of time. So, for example, if I uh, uh, get a rope and if I move from one position and just uh, leaving that rope from that initial position to the final position, so that length of the rope will be the distance covered. But if I move circularly, moving along with that row and come to the initial position then I can say that I covered a particular distance which is the circumference of that circle of that circular path but the displacement here will be the zero what now what is meant by displacement so displacement is the displacement is the particular distance covered in particular direction Considering direction is uh, matter here because displacement is a vector quantity, distance is a scalar quantity. Now, what is meant by scalar? Scalar is those physical quantities which are represented by their magnitudes only. For example, temperature, time, length, mass, these are the scalar quantities. These are only described by describing their magnitudes. Now what is meant by magnitude? So magnitude is just a numerical value. For example, what is the temperature, room temperature here? So we may regard it as a 30 degree Celsius. So this 30, this numerical value is the magnitude of the temperature. It do not require any information of direction to describe it. That's why temperature is a scalar quantity. In the same way mass, suppose if I say the mass of sugar is 2 kilogram, then this numeric value 2 is called as its magnitude. If uh, I draw a line of 5 cm with the help of scale, then that 5 is the numerical value and that numerical value will be the magnitude and that distance will be the 5 cm. So in this way, we can describe the scalar quantity. Distance here in this chapter, what, which quantity we are going to have, which are come in the category of scalar or distance, speed, mass, time, length. These are the scalar quantities. Displacement which required a direction. So that's why it is a vector quantity. Then comes the speed. 
we generally regard all this terminology in day to day life what is the speed huh? if any movie is running on then we say that uh, it is a very slow movie or a train is going fast it is a very fast train if we come across any train which is opposite uh, uh, direction which uh, we up, uh, coming from the opposite direction then we say that uh, it is moving faster or slower or when we are in the vehicle our speedometer shows what particular value 40 or there are some signposts on the highways that speed limit is here 30 km per hour 40 km per hour 80 km per hour so this term speed is regarded as uh, describing for motion speed is the change in the displacement rate of change of distance speed is the rate of change of distance now what is meant by rate so rate is the changing quantity with respect to time we say it as speed is defined as it is a rate of change of distance so speed can be regarded as it is a distance upon time distance upon time and speed it do not require any uh, knowledge of direction that's why speed is a scalar quantity and speed is generally measured in meter per second distance is measured in meter time is measured in second so its SI unit is meter per second when we generally say that what is the unit we describe it as a uh, in terms of SI unit there are different form of system of measurements and uh, internationally recognized form is the standard uh, international system which is called as the SI units so here we are going to consider uh, the SI units only so here speed as a SI unit of meter per second then comes another quantity which is called as a velocity velocity is also a rate of change of displacement so velocity is defined as displacement upon time or it is a rate of change of displacement both distance and displacement are measured in meters so here in velocity also displacement will be measured in meter and time is measured in second so there are different system as I earlier told SI system we are generally using so there are some fundamental quantities on which we are going to describe this so in the fundamental quantities there is a length or the distance time mass these are the fundamental quantities in terms of these fundamental quantities we derive some quantities and based on those quantities these are called as a derived quantities so speed velocity both are the derived quantities which depend on the distance as well as time also displacement and the time so these are the derived quantities and velocity is also measured in terms of meter per second there is a mks system also uh, mks system fps system cgs system M what is meant by mks so mks uh, system in that system uh, mass is measured in kilogram uh, mass kilogram and second uh, meter kilogram and second these are the mks generally mks and the si system both are equivalent cgs system cgs system a quite a lower unit we generally do not describe uh, our length uh, uh, which we draw in our notebook in uh, kilometers or foot but we can measure it in centimeters or inch so these are quite smaller units so similar way there are smaller for example uh, gold uh, calibrated in terms of uh, for ornaments in the grams so kilograms is not used uh, there kilogram is for the big quantities so this unit used for the quantify the small amount that is the cgs unit so cgs stand for centimeter gram and second in which the lengths or the distances are measured in centimeters masses are measured into the grams and time is measured into the seconds in MKS system, SI system and the FPS or CGS system time is always measured in second so here about, uh, that is about the speed and velocity now we are going to see 
what exactly this motion, uh, uniform motion and non-uniform motion. So graphically, uniform motion. So uniform motion <coughs> is that kind of motion in which it covers equal distances in equal time interval. Then that motion is called as a uniform motion. You get the idea that uh, uniform motion is the equal interval of time covered in uh, equal distances covered in equal time intervals. Then that motion is called as a uniform motion. Now let us uh, uh, take one elaboration regarding speed, scalar, vector, and uniform motion. Suppose if I uh, here uh, I am here in Buranpur. If I want to go Indore, Indore is about 180 kilometers from the Buranpur. So if I set uh, my vehicle speed about 60 kilometer per hour, so as per that rate, that means speed 60 kilometer per hour, I can reach in three hours if I maintain that speed uniformly throughout the time or throughout the whole journey. So that will be calibrated. So first 60 kilometers in one hour, second for second hour my journey will uh, journey will be again 60 kilometers. For third hour my journey will be again traveled will be 60 kilometers. So in particular one hour the distance travel is 60 kilometers. That is same. Then that motion is called as a uniform motion. So I set it as a speed as well as also velocity. But if if I consider this as a velocity, I should move from Buranpur to Indore in the north direction only. If I go from Buranpur towards south direction with either 60 km per hour or 600 km per hour, I cannot reach Indore in particular time because my direction is wrong. So when I describe velocity direction, mention of the direction is important. So, when I said my velocity should be 60 km per hour, then and then only I can reach indoor within 3 hours. So, hope this uh, elaboration will explain this concept of scalar vector as well as speed velocity and about the uniform motion. But the journey is not quite smooth from Buranpur to Indore. There may be the twist and turns, there may be the traffic, there may be the guard sections areas. So my journey will be like that for first hour may I uh, increase my speed from 40 km per hour to 60 km per hour. If there is a less traffic and road is smooth then I can move my speed from 60 km per hour to 80 km per hour. So, so for uniform motion <coughs> the distance covered in equal time interval will be the same. So that will be the uniform motion. And for that, my speed is constant. So, these both graphs indicate the uniform motion. This is the distance time graph and this is the time, uh, speed time graph. So, in this distance time graph, as my time is increasing, my distance covered is also increasing. And in equal interval of time, my distance covered, if it is equal, suppose these are the time factors, suppose in hours. For particular one hour, second hour, third hour and fourth hour. If distances travelled are same, then that motion will be the uniform motion. And my speed is constant that time. For first hour, second hour, third, day, uh, third fourth, if my speed is like 10, 20, 30 and here 35 km per hour. And that is constant. So here, when the line in speed time graph is parallel to the x-axis then that motion is the uniform motion and if it is an inclined straight line in distance time graph then that motion is also a uniform motion in distance time graph. We are going to see also velocity time graph as well but it can be shifted into the uh, different quadrant also as it can have the negative values. Scalar quantity generally have uh, the positive values. Vector quantities can have the negative values. So here, while describing the difference between the distance and the displacement, we can regard displacement in negative also. And displacement is always positive. 
velocity can be negative but speed cannot be negative the same relation continues as speed involves the distance and velocity involves the displacement they are different one so now in the graph we are going to deal with the different kind of graphs so already uh, i have shown you the distance time graph and speed time graph for uniform motion what about the non uniform motion so as i already told if i want to go from guralpur to indar the journey is not smooth so there will be the different ways guard traffic so my speed may get reduced differently so what will be the distance covered so my distance covered in first hour will be smooth like this for another hour it will be like this or second third hour it will be like this or uh, distance covered will be less so this will be the zigzag path for distance covered either or for the speed also for speed time also my path is zigzag so this represent the non uniform motion non uniform motion is that kind of motion in which it covers the unequal distances or the displacements in either equal or unequal time intervals that motion is called as a non uniform motion now here another parameter comes which is called as a acceleration now what is meant by acceleration so acceleration is again a rate rate of change already we have seen the word rate in definition of speed as well as velocity speed is the rate of change of distance velocity is the rate of change of displacement in the same manner acceleration is the physical quantity which is defined as the rate of change of velocity i said acceleration is the rate of change of velocity when we term as a rate there is always denominator uh, denominator factor time so here acceleration we define it as acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so it is change in velocity change in velocity upon time velocity is measured in meter per second and time is measured in second so meter per second upon time measured in second so it gives the unit as meter per second square so acceleration has this psi unit meter per second square it tells us in particular time interval how much the velocity changes as velocity is a vector quantity hence the acceleration also acceleration is a vector quantity it required magnitude as well as direction to describe it acceleration is measured in meter per second if i say for example my car is accelerated for 2 meter per second square what does this statement mean it means that for 1 second my car's velocity is increasing by 2 meter per second for 1 second it increases by 2 meter per second then i can say it is the acceleration of 2 meter per second square so this is about the acceleration acceleration is also a vector quantity so this was about the initial parameters which are essential and important to describe the motion in the next we are going to see the derivation for equations of motions thank you